In this video, we will focus on some important aspects of biomass conversion to bioenergy. First of all, we will look at the different forms of biomass that can be used for bioenergy production. Next, we will take a closer look at the different techniques for biomass conversion. To produce bioenergy, we can use different forms of biomass. The most commonly used are forestry crops and residues and agricultural crops and residues. Less well known are industry and household residues such as sewage sludge, animal manure and domestic organic waste. The different types of biomass have different characteristics such as moisture content, particle size and composition. Forestry biomass and agricultural residues are made of lignocellulose. Lignocellulosic biomass mainly consists of three polymeric components. Cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Depending on the ratio of these compounds, biomass is more or less readily biological degradable. When we look at the different techniques to convert biomass into bioenergy, we can distinguish four different types of processes. Mechanical physical processes, chemical conversion, biochemical conversion and thermochemical conversion. For each of these processes we will discuss the techniques and the input, output efficiency and practical availability of these techniques. As discussed in the previous module, mechanical physical processes do not change the chemical structure of the biomass components. They only perform a size reduction or a separation. These processes can be encountered before the main conversion steps. This is called pretreatment of the biomass. Sewage sludge and animal residues are very wet biomass sources which contain a lot of water. As a result, they typically have a low energy density. To produce energy from these wet streams, usually some kind of pre-processing is needed, such as active or passive drying. Forestry crops and residues and agricultural crops and residues are less wet, but they often need their size reduction for efficient energy production. This can be done by cutting, chipping, shredding or pelletizing. Size reduction is probably the most inefficient of all unit operations, consuming large quantities of energy and having no economy of scale. Crushing can be used to extract oil from oil-rich crops such as rape and sunflowers. The efficiency of crushing depends on the oil content of the biomass. Chemical processes are those where a chemical change in substrate occurs. Vegetable or used oil can be converted into biodiesel via esterification, transesterification reactions using different kinds of catalysts. The production of biodiesel out of oil rich crops is a proven and simple technique that is applied worldwide. As discussed last week, several biofuels can also be produced using the Fischer-Tropes technology and lignocellulosic biomass. Biochemical processes occur at mild conditions such as lower temperature and pressure using microorganisms or enzymes. A typical example of a biochemical conversion is fermentation. Fermentation is an anaerobic microbiological conversion process that produces either biomethane or classical bioethanol. In the first stage of microbial conversion, complex organic molecules are broken down into simple sugars, amino acids and fatty acids. This stage is named the hydrolysis stage. In the next stage, the acidification stage, acidogenic bacteria break the hydrolysis stage products into simpler molecules and volatile fatty acids. These simpler molecules and volatile fatty acids can be transformed into biomethane by methanogens in the methanogenesis stage. If methanogenesis is inhibited, acidogenic bacteria will transform the simpler molecules and volatile fatty acids to bioethanol. Fermentation is applicable for wet biomass. It is a proven technology that is used worldwide. The efficiency of fermentation based on organic dry matter can be up to 90%. For example, the policy in Brazil is to produce 25% of the transport fuel from sugarcane via fermentation. The last biomass conversion technology is thermochemical conversion. We can distinguish four main techniques. Combustion, torrefaction, pyrolysis and gasification. Combustion is also called burning. This means adding oxygen to free chemical energy content from biomass. Combustion produces heat. 
driving a car is a good example. A rather new thermochemical process is torrefaction. Torrefaction is carried out under atmospheric pressure and in the absence of oxygen at temperatures ranging between 200 and 300 degrees Celsius. Torrefaction leads mainly to char and gases. Liquids are not formed. Pyrolysis is a technique that is similar to torrefaction but at higher temperatures. The products are char, oil and gases. We can distinguish slow and fast pyrolysis. The main differences are the process temperature and the ratio of the products that are formed. The fourth thermochemical conversion technique is gasification. Gasification is a process that converts organic materials into carbon monoxide, hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This is achieved at high temperatures with the controlled amount of oxygen, so no combustion occurs. The resulting gas mixture is called syngas and itself is a fuel. The next table shows the input efficiency and the practical availability of the different thermochemical conversion techniques. As you can see, most techniques are applicable for all types of biomass except sewage sludge and very wet biomass. Gasification can be used for all types of biomass. Both combustion and gasification are proven and common use techniques. The other techniques are in a pilot scale phase. As you can see, the highest efficiencies can be reached with slow pyrolysis and torrefaction. Combustion and gasification have the lowest efficiencies.